And this engulfment candle of the last of the previous two days worth of selling was a super incredibly, incredibly bullish sign. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of uh, weekend update show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Uh, we'll get to the day in a second. We'll get to the week in a second. Uh, it is Friday. Usually I record these videos either Saturday morning or Sunday morning after I have a chance to kind of decompress. It is about an hour uh, after uh, the market has uh, has closed. It is five o'clock, and the reason why I am taking care of business now, number one, everything is still fresh in my head. My wife just showed me uh, my kids' basketball schedule between tonight, Saturday, and Sunday, and this is literally uh, the only time uh, I have a chance to kind of share uh, my thoughts and share them uh, with you guys. Again, as always, folks, uh, I, I really do, from the bottom of my heart, appreciate uh, all the love and support uh, for uh, the channel, for uh, the whole community, for Access a Trader, for all uh, everybody has uh, contributed to. Uh, if you are uh, brand new here, I would love for you guys to subscribe, kind of share the journey with us. If you could be so kind, uh, like the video as well. So uh, I'm trying to, again, uh, week by week, video by video, trying to just give uh, a very, very unbiased opinion from my eyes of what I think is happening and what I think is happening technically. Uh, if you guys remember going all the way back to uh, 2022, uh, we'll kind of go in a quick history lesson, and then at the end of the day, you know, at the end of the day, you can make your uh, judgment on what happens next. So we started 2022 below the 50-day moving average, right? Uh, if you've been watching this video even for the last year, uh, you kind of know what happened in 2022. Nasdaq went down. Uh, 33 uh, percent but in that time I, I will say uh, there was a lot of really good trading opportunities to the upside as well so the bull was not shut out but out of every eight out of ten days uh, and that's kind of what the data showed us uh, the market was sell buys right so that's what happens below the 50-day moving average we're sell buys so all the way here right let's fast forward well, that we don't have to go every single day so what happened was we started 2023 the exactly the same way we started uh, 2022. Remember, again, below the 50-day moving average is bearish. Above the 50-day moving average is bullish. And the first week or so, we went down. We, we went down for the first you know three, four days. And then all of a sudden, like just the same way it happened. Again, I don't want to compare uh, the generational bottom of 2009, but it's, it's the same similarity. We just stopped going down. The same way sellers got tired in 2009 after a two, two and a half year mortgage uh, crisis saga and battle and people again losing their homes, their jobs, uh, their minds, right? Eventually the market just got numb to it. Sellers got tired and the market started uh, going higher. And for the next, you know, from 2009 uh, all the way up to, geez, you can, you can make a case to 2021. We had this in incredible, incredible uh, bull market run. And the most important part was the dynamics of it, right? And this is kind of where things change and things change very, very quickly. Again, I've been saying this for years. I don't know what's going to happen okay, in the future. I have no idea. If Apple one day might be 300, Apple one might day be 50. I have no idea. Again, we try, if you're especially new to this channel, we try every single day, just look at the data, right? The raw, hard, technical data and make uh, an actionable thesis of what we think is going to happen the next day. If we're wrong, we're wrong. We're wrong theoretically. We're not wrong financially because everything we are looking for has to confirm. So you could be wrong a thousand times out of a thousand times theoretically. Just don't be wrong. You know, don't be wrong financially. Basically, don't jump the gun. Don't anticipate. Don't think. Don't have an opinion. Let the market tell you what's going to do. And I think I've said that pretty much in every single video uh, since I started uh, recording uh, recording this and, and putting them on uh, YouTube. But something changed, right? And all of a sudden, we stopped going down and right around here, right? Because people are talking about today, the market broke out, market broke out. If you've been watching this channel, you kind of know 
where the important area was. Once we reclaimed 278, and that was reclaiming back the 50-day moving average, that stopped the bleeding, right? So when the NASDAQ was down 33% for 2022, that temporarily at least put a Band-Aid, put whatever you wanted on it, right? Whatever on the wound. And then slowly but surely, we started having a nice two, three-day rally. And then all of a sudden, we had this drawback day and we lost the 50-day moving average. And this is where things really started to kind of play out here. And this is kind of where we are uh, today and kind of helped us today. If you guys remember the following day, okay, the following night that we lost the 50-day moving average, people were saying, well, here we go again, right? Netflix is going to come out with earnings. It's going to come out with terrible earnings. And the next thing we know, we're going to get killed again. We're going back to the lows. Again, the Fed doesn't even know what it wants to do. We're going to be raising rates till 2096. We're all going to die before anybody even feels the effects of anything good financially in the markets again. This is why we play the game. So Netflix came out with earnings and it started a, 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 a tremendous amount of events. And I'll, and I'll give you two or three really specific ones that the market started negating bad news, okay? And there's nothing more bullish than, a, first of all, a reclaiming back of the 50-day moving average and then starting negating bad news. So when Netflix came out with earnings, you saw the earnings were light. And you saw this whole big battle on social media. This is the worst stock ever. How could it possibly go higher? Doesn't make any sense. That's right. It doesn't make sense. Welcome to the stock market. But that was the first sign that the market not only got tired, but it was very, very, it was very numb to bad news. And then the market started going higher. And this engulfment candle of the last of the previous two days worth of selling was a super incredibly, incredibly bullish sign. And then the next day, what happened the next day? Goldman Sachs came out with earnings. Right. So if I told you Goldman Sachs the next day was going to be down 30 points, taking down the financials with you. Right. You think the market. Oh, see, there you go. Market's down five, six hundred. Nope, 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 nope. Again, another sign. Right. Another sign of bad news getting engulfed. And what happened that day? We exploded. Right. We absolutely exploded again into the 100 and 150 day moving average. Right. The next day. What happened the next day? Right. Microsoft. Microsoft came out with earnings. You guys remember that, right? At first, they gapped up 10 points. Everything was good. Their conference call came out. They sold Microsoft. The NASDAQ opened down 300 points. And guess what happened then? The market engulfed that bad news again. So that's three separate events, uh, three separate events, three separate companies, three separate dynamic companies that are vastly followed in institutional money flow, including the biggest uh, uh, broke, uh, bank in the world, uh, and the biggest uh, software company, top two weighted indexes on the NASDAQ 100. That went higher. And then we came up to Tesla. Surely Tesla is going to stop this rally, right? Absolutely. How could Tesla continue this rally? Everybody knows, you know, Tesla lost 65% last year. The stock should go to zero, right? That, that did, nobody told that to the people who were betting the stock. If you guys remember before Tesla, we talked about the 150 buyers, the 155 buyers, the 160 buyers, even the crazies at 170, they were betting they were going to beat earnings. And after a 65 point move, a 65% move down on earnings uh, and earnings and everything else in 2022, there was a lot of meat left on this bone if they weren't going to say anything horrible. Not only did they not say anything horrible, well, they, you know, they beat the top line, they beat the bottom line. I don't care what any other uh, intervals were in their conference call. It doesn't make a difference what they said, right? It doesn't make a difference. And I said this uh, all the time. It doesn't make a difference what the news is. It's how the market responds to it. And based on what we saw with Netflix, with Microsoft, with Goldman Sachs, it doesn't matter what we think. The stock market spoke and the stock market spoke loudly. And if you guys remember the last video I did was Wednesday night. I was waiting for that 148. You guys remember that? I, that's all I was talking about. 148, 148. Guys, watch what happens at 148. Let's just say Tesla took out the 148, right? Tesla took out 148, just went absolutely bananas, okay? Went absolutely insane. And that led us up to today's session, okay? Last night, Intel came out with earnings. And if you didn't buy into the previous three examples, and the reason why Intel was such a big deal, well, if you guys remember, and I know a lot of you guys, uh, a lot of you guys uh, did not trade, uh, during 1999 and 2000, Intel was a pretty big deal. It was Intel, it was Microsoft, it was Cisco, right? 
Oracle also as well. But those were the you know those were the leaders, right? That was a big event. When one of these companies come out with earnings, it was a huge event. And what's what's cool about Intel is even though it's not a sexy stock anymore and it's lost a lot of its luster, you can make an argument. It's still the most important ship out there, right? Maybe you know again, maybe not in everybody's world and everybody's mind, but it's still the most important ship. Well, last night Intel, what happened to Intel, right? Intel missed their numbers just like Microsoft, just like technically uh, uh, technically Netflix, just like Goldman Sachs. And just in the true fashion of what we've been seeing for the last three weeks, right? Ever since the, uh, the bulls reclaimed back that 278 level on the NASDAQ 100, okay? They negated bad news. And what we started from the day when the, the you know, NASDAQ was down 100, 150, whatever the hell it was, I don't even remember anymore, okay? The point is they bought the dip again and today turned out to be one of the most insane and for all you guys who traded today you kind of know it's a, again if you didn't trade today it's it's like again me trying to explain to you what the wind looks like right we kind of know what it feels like but explain to somebody what it looks like and today turned out to be one of the most insane days um i could remember in an incredibly long time it felt like at one point today okay that the whole market was about to go parabolic, right? Look at look at some of these intraday candles. Look at Tesla today, okay? This is Tesla right from the word go, right from the word go. Took out the previous day's high, gapped up overnight, just just went absolutely out of its mind. I mean, this is one after another. Look, look at NVIDIA, just to give you an idea, right? NVIDIA forgot that it was a semiconductor, right? Totally forgot it was a semiconductor. That's the whole point. This is where the action is speaking louder than words. This is where the action speaks louder uh, than everybody's opinion. It's bigger than me. It's bigger than you. It's all about what happens next. And if the cherry, if the cherry wasn't on top of the bulls reclaiming the 50-day moving average, guess what happened today? The bulls reclaimed, the QQQs reclaimed the 200-day moving average. And that's the mother of all supply and demand. So without me giving you an opinion of what I think is going to happen, let me just say this much, right? And this, and this is, again, where everybody's an adult. Uh, everybody has their own, you know, financial responsibilities. Everybody has their own uh, financial goals and wants and needs. Look, the, the market is not going to go up every day, okay? And I feel like I say that every single day and it goes up every single day, right? But let me say it again. The market is not going to go up every single day. We know that, right? We're not naive. I'm doing this nearly 24 years, okay? We understand that. But a lot of key levels have been reclaimed since uh, the queues reclaimed on January the 11th. So you're talking about you're talking about 20 points on the queues since January the 11th, right? We're at January uh, 27th. That's 16 points just from the 11th, and we are 38 points from the bottom here, right? Literally from the bottom of this quadruple bottom that the bulls held uh, all the way on January the 6th. 38 points from the lows is pretty impressive. You wanna hear another impressive number? Tesla in three weeks is up 77%, right? Lucid today, just to give you an example of how crazy this market is. Lucid today at one point was up 50, 60%. Crazy day, insane action. And again, folks, uh, whether you deem yourself conservative, liberal, um, permable, permabear. We, we are all living in this one world, this one world, crazy world, chaotic world. So we have to live together. And it's super important to be kind of a cool person in real life, right? Uh, you don't need to agree with anybody. You don't need to agree with me. You don't like to like me. It doesn't make a difference, right? You don't you don't need to respect me. You don't need to respect your neighbor, your neighbor's friends, your friend's friend's mailman, your friend's mailman's dog, right? But the point is, as long as we are alive and we're kicking, we're in this chaotic world of ours, let's try to be a little, little cordial to each other. Nobody has to like each other, but try to be a little cordial. So next time around, okay, when the market is not going in your direction or you feel like the market is, is crazy or it doesn't make sense, remember this, nobody cares. And I say that as nice as possible, okay? Don't put your insecurities, your negative energy, your wishes and wants and anything in between on another human being. Data is data, right? Opinions are opinions. The only problem is 
your opinion and my opinion for the 85th millionth time, it doesn't matter. Men lie, women don't lie, data doesn't, right? Data doesn't, and that's the most important thing. And going into this week, look, is it possible we have a back test, right? 100%, why not, right? Why not? But that will give us some phenomenal opportunities if, it did, if indeed it comes, okay? If indeed it comes, it should. I mean, it should. At some, at some point, we should get one or two days of potential rest in this market. It's been a tremendous move. But for those days, right, I'm going to be looking for opportunities for these stocks to slowly but surely come back into some rising support. Those are great levels to pick up steam. This week, we have some really important, you know, really important numbers coming out. You got uh, Meta reporting, you got AMD reporting. Next Thursday, you have, um, you have Amazon, Google, uh, Amazon, Google, and Apple. Talk about the, the three amigos, right? So they're going to set the tone. So if we can get out of next week without any craziness or materialistic um, materialistic changes, and we survive earnings for uh, technology, and we still maintain appreciation of price action. Again, guys, keep in mind, last year we were down 33% of the NASDAQ, right? That's all I have to say. So take whatever I said tonight, take it for what it's worth, if you think I'm a schmuck, hey, you don't need to watch me, right? If you think I'm this, if you think I'm that, again, guys, data speaks the loudest. Price action is all that's important. And the most important part is us trying to make it to the next day with the best way we could possibly and the most responsible way we can. Guys, have an unbelievable weekend. Uh, guys, God bless. Stay healthy. Love each other, right? We only have one life to live, man. Love each other. You don't like to like anybody, but love each other. We're all human beings. We're just trying to make it a happier and safer world for us and our children. Guys, God bless, and I will see you all next week. Take care.